Hello and welcome to the Build a Soil YouTube series. Today we have a product highlight video, sort of a marketing video, but if you've already purchased it, this is gonna help you build it and understand exactly what to do when you get your package in the mail. So we're gonna unbox it, and the product we're discussing today is the Highgrove Magnolia 4. The build would be very similar for the Magnolia 4 or the Magnolia 6, just a couple extra screws. So this should suffice for anyone that's getting this light in the mail wants to build it. There are instructions inside, but there will be a few steps where I kind of show you, hey, this is what I noticed might cause a problem for you. Um, like where a wire goes or th those things. I can't tell you how many times I read instructions and built the product and realized the last step that it was upside down and backwards or something. And so I think this will help you avoid any issues. I love these bench maids if you've seen some of my videos. And so this is a Griptilian, the little tiny one, the mini, which uh, my girls got me for Christmas, so thank you so much. And I love it, it's a lot lighter. So anyways. So first thing I want you to notice is the packing. It's got these foam inserts and it's completely wrapped so that you don't get a damaged product. I'm just gonna go ahead and start setting all the trash right here and then I'll eventually put it in the box. So there's gonna be in the Magnolia 4, you're gonna get two boxes, and this is gonna have like your power supply, uh, so we'll discuss that. Here's the actual grow light. This is what a Magnolia 2 looks like. It's got two panels on it. And then this is another two, which will make the Magnolia 4. Now, these are, these do have the capability that you can add on to them. However, the way that the dimmer relays work and everything, you might need an extra part. So fairly soon in the future, by the time probably you're seeing this video, we're gonna to start to add on parts so that if you do wanna take a two and get the connective bars and get the dual dimmer, we can have like an upgrade kit so that you can do it on your own. I know there was some technology as far as the barrel connectors and some actual like protected information there that made it so you had to send the lights back to the manufacturer to get any adjustments made. And so we're gonna to hope to overcome that um, in the future as far as being a customizable grow light. So that's pretty cool. Otherwise, let's get into building it right now. I think that's the most important part. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And then I can use this to pad the table that I'm gonna work on just to be gentle on the light. So I'm gonna leave this here and I'll do the same with this one. It's not totally necessary, but you are working with a grow light. So you wanna have kind of a clean space to work on. I'm gonna remove the foam because I won't be needing that. And then this should be just in a bag. And so you can see right here, I'll discuss some of the component parts. This is the Samsung LM301H for horticulture. And so these particular full spectrum 3500K um, LED diodes are what I prefer. It mimics the sun, it's a bright white light, looks really good. And then added, which you'll see in some of the grow lights, are uh, the, the red. And so there's UV, you can see it's clearly listed UV. And there's IR or the infrared, and there's also far red in here. So we have the infrared, the far red, and we have the UV. And so that combination is trying to mimic the sun as much as possible, and then add the points that are going to potentially express more trichome coverage on our plants, potentially give it some of that stress that the sun causes from the UV that causes them to put more sunscreen on, so to speak. And so whether it's cannabis or house plants or anything, I think that mimicking what the sun does is ideal when it comes to an indoor grow. The sun is the ultimate grow light. I think I get best results using it, but these have come such a long way. If you're watching this and maybe you bought an LED light five years ago, 10 years ago, they didn't last as long as they said, they didn't produce the yield and all the diodes would burn out and they were blurple in color. These are the real deal. And if you have a bad taste in your mouth at LED, I'd highly, highly consider taking a, another look at them because this light absolutely produces. And if you're comparing other grow lights on the market, I think that as long as you get a really reputable diode and you get a really good driver with a good warranty, you're probably doing a good job. Other things of notice, just when you're out there on the market, you'll notice this part on the back here, this is called the heat sink. And one of the things that I've noticed being a grower is that the old school lights, the HPS or the metal halide, there was a big bulb and it was a center one light was the was emitted. This is hundreds of them. So there's a difference there. And that one light would produce a lot of heat and it would project it down off the reflector. That heat would feel like warm sun on the plants. And I feel like they really liked it. The challenge with that is it would project so much heat that if your plants grew close to it, it would start to burn them. 
So we had glass coverings on those old grow hoods and you'd move air through it to constantly cool the grow lights. Well, that means you needed another fan and you'd be moving dirt through there and it would, it would block the glass, lower the potency of your light. And so there's a lot of just cons to that. And when it comes to the LED, one of the pros is a lot of people think it produces less heat, but I will say it's different. The heat is based on the wattage used. It's gonna produce heat. But the heat comes off this heat sink and it rises. And if you have fans in, it actually wicks the, the heat away pretty quickly. It does not send the heat down, it just sends the light down. So your plants aren't gonna feel it. And if you've watched our previous episodes on the environment, we talk about the VPD, humidity versus temperature. We also discuss that if you're using LEDs, or metal, really any light, you should be taking a reading of the leaf surface temperature using the little laser gun. That leaf surface temperature is more important when it comes to VPD than just the grow room. And if you switch from an old school light that's blasting heat down and you add an LED, you may actually notice problems with your plant grow because the light's more potent and there's not as much warmth. And the warmth is what often uh, drives that transpiration and drives the utilization of the nutrients and creates the flow. So a lot of LED growers will use a little bit warmer temperature knowing they're missing out on that. And I think that makes a big difference. But one of the things that happens with LED is all the heat comes off the back. And if it's not done properly, it will actually shorten the life of these expensive LEDs on here because they're just on a board next to each other. And if the heat isn't removed, they're gonna burn out eventually. Even though there's a warranty, you don't wanna to have to go through taking your light down and sending it in. So because we know the heat sink is done right, I'll explain a little more. That's how we're able to give a five-year warranty on all the major components. So I think that's a big plus. When it comes to the heat sink, um, most companies just basically stick this thing on here. And there's a very thin layer of, of copper. Um, depending on the company, the idea is to have an efficient transfer of that energy over to the heat sink. Um, Dan at Highgrove, uh, formerly Timber, he really cares, really understands this, and can really answer our questions. And so that's part of why I like working with him. He's supported us for years. He adds extra copper in here that adds more money that you don't see as far as the component, but it makes the product last longer and it helps them on the back end when it comes to warranties because they're truly gonna last that long. The Meanwell driver has a great warranty as it is, and so that's a really good product. Uh, this is where the power supply is gonna go, and I'll explain that. And then this is where the dimmer plugs into. And you'll need to take note of that because we need to match the light bar up in a moment here. All right, I'll talk about the orientation of these next to each other in just a moment. Let me get the bars out that will kind of dictate um, which direction these lights go as far as applying the bars. So here's the one with the dimmer. And you'll notice on the dimmer, the newer models and all the high grubs going forward will have this. So 100% is maxed out. And then you can see down to 50%, down to 25% and lower. The reason why those markings are put there is so that if you have more than one of these, you can kind of eyeball on this gauge the similar potency of each light. So you don't have one slightly brighter than the other without having to bust out a par meter. Let me set this down. I'll get the next one out and then we'll just build it. The instructions are in one of the boxes. I'll set that to the side. In here, we're gonna have our hardware that we're gonna use to connect it and a couple of extra black tabs just in case there's an issue. These are already nested inside here so that you don't have to do that part. You just need to attach the screw but there are extra. We've also got our power supplies. Because they're expandable, this just comes with two power supplies. I usually use a power strip to plug it into. You can do whatever you'd like, but just note that if you order this, you're gonna have to have two plugs instead of one. If you're trying to plug into one outlet, they sell those little double or triple that you can just plug this into and, and work it. And that works just fine. Waterproof rated, so it's got these barrel connectors. It's IP65, so you can spray it with water and you know, totally fine for this greenhouse type setting. You're also going to get your rope ratchets. And so these are what you attach to each corner of the light to hang it in the air. And there's four of them. Here's one more bar. It just doesn't have a dimmer connected to it because you only need one dimmer. Well, let's look at the instructions. So I make sure it says place the Magnolia LED board assemblies on a large flat surface with the light diode side facing up, driver side facing down. Be careful not to damage the LED diodes. Place the end rails on the underside, the heat sink thin side. So here's what I mean by that. Let's say we put the dimmer on this side, okay? The way that it works here is that you're gonna be putting a screw through the board. There's two holes here, and they're gonna go directly into these black tabs that have a hole in them. So you can slide them up to match the distance, put it in here, and you're gonna attach it. But instead of me trying to do it this way, he's recommended flipping these over, which will make it a lot easier. The next thing is how this is oriented. These hooks go in towards the base of the light so that when it's done, it'll look like this. 
and I hook the light right here and I can access the dimmer from below the light, not above the light, okay? So that's how I'm gonna do it. But first what I'd like to do is just flip these over and match them. So these are opposite right now. You can tell there's a dimmer on this side and there's not on this side, so that's not proper. I'd like to have the dimmer on this side, at least on the same side. So now you can tell this is gonna hook up into here. So it needs to be on this side. So let's flip these, like he mentioned. We're gonna keep the dimmer on the same side. And now everything's oriented properly. Okay, they're facing the same direction. The dimmers are on this side. And since I know that the dimmer is basically now gonna face this direction, because this will be under the light, this is exactly how it's going to attach. So I'm gonna take my Allen wrench, which I've got right here. And this is a 3 16th, depending on which light might be slightly different, so just read your instructions. Um, I think it comes with an Allen wrench as well. I'm going to slide this to the edge, all the way to the side, and I'm gonna grab two pieces of hardware. Now, word to the wise, one of the things you may not notice is you're just gonna put these screws through and you're gonna try and attach this. If this little wire slips underneath the base like this, it's gonna create a gap and you're not gonna be able to screw it down and you're gonna be like, am I missing something? Make sure that's out of your way and there's no wires like this wires right there. I wanna make sure there's also one more. So this one, I just wanna make sure that I'm flat across the base. I'm not pinching the wire or it won't go flush. So I get it right on the edge. I move the wires out of the way and then I just line the screw up. And I do it by hand. So that's loosely in there. I'll use my Allen wrench for the rest. And then this one slid down a little bit because I was moving it. So before I tighten anything, that's why I didn't tighten it. I just leave them loose as I connect them. I go around tighten it at the end. That's always helpful when you have things that could be off from each other on angle, making it harder on yourself. So now this one's lined up. I'm just gonna drop it in there. It connects easy, which means there's no wires pinching anywhere. I'm not gonna fully tighten it, but I'm just gonna make sure it's you know, well connected. Hand tight. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna go through tighten them at the end like I suggested. Okay, move the wire out of the way, line it up and grab my hardware. Well, I did a lot of talking, but this is pretty quick to build once you get going. We're almost done. I have it flush to the edge. I wanna make sure that everything's oriented. Now this one I moved like a quarter inch and so that's partially another reason why I don't tighten everything. Just wanna make sure I'm all the way to the edge here. So I keep the maximum distance here to get the most spread out of this light. You could take these rails off and make your own, you could just hang them floating. I mean, there's lots of ways you could use this light. Now all I need to do, instead of going to the other side, I'm just gonna rotate this and be careful when I do so. Same thing, this rail, it's got a beveled edge that's gonna to face to the outside here so it looks good. And then these hooks are gonna go on the inside so that they're all on the inside of the light, nothing sticking out, easy for me to connect to. And then I, I know that this is the right side because this is what has the kind of the, the nut, so to speak. So there's four of them slid down here. I'm gonna slide two of them all the way to the other side. Keep the one about the right distance and the other one all the way to the edge. There's time to fix it, you know, if it's not quite lined up as you go. Make sure the wires are not pinching underneath. Okay, they're all square. I've kind of hand tightened all of them. I'm gonna go ahead and crank these down now, flip it over and plug everything in. I'm not trying to break this thing. I'm just giving it like a good quarter turn past hand tight, make sure it's nice and snug. I'm not gonna be, you know, shaking this light. It's just gonna be hanging. Okay, that's it, it's built. Let's show you what it looks like for the connections. Again, if you've got questions about this above and beyond, you can always email support at buildaswell.com. We're, we're gonna do our best to help you. This video is, in case you're wondering how it build, is built, or maybe you're just checking it out to see how hard it's gonna be to build before you buy it. Okay, so we, we did the right thing and we made sure that this was on the right end for the dimmer. That plugs in and there's a couple ways. You can just kind of leave it hanging or you could tuck it underneath this other one so we kind of route the cables where it's gonna hold nice and flat. Now last is the power connection. There's one on each and we have two power supply lines. Um, there are barrel connectors that can connect one into both, but I feel like this is a really clean way. If you have an issue or anything like that, you can separate them. So that's one thing. On the barrel connector, there's a spot where there's a groove and there's an actual uh, groove that matches up on this side. And so you just match them up so they fit 
and then you screw it together. This is what keeps it uh, waterproof rated and allows it to not be separated when you pull. You're gonna hang this and put it inside the grow space, but right now I've already got one in there. So to wrap it up, I'll just show you in there, show you the light really quickly while it's on, and then I'll walk back out here and wrap it up. So take a peek. So here's the Magnolia 4 already built. So you can see I've got my dimmer right here on this side, all the way bright, dim, thing is bright. It's pretty crazy. So I'm just gonna leave it there. That's what it looks like while it's running. If you've got questions, like I said, reach out to us, post them up on the video here. If I missed anything, I'll be happy to answer them. If you want to know more about this tropical 10 by 10, we're about to deck it out with more house plants and fruit plants and possibly some citrus. We have some coffee over there. We're gonna be talking about the potency of the light based on how the plants like it, the hours in the day, the grow environment, all those things. So if that stuff's interesting to you, subscribe to the channel. We're gonna be dropping the videos very regularly and we just appreciate you watching. All right, well, thanks for watching me build the Magnolia 4 by High Grove Lighting. I'm really impressed by this light. We're gonna be running it. It's all magnolias in the 10 by 10. We're using all magnolias in the tropical side. So if you've got questions, post them up in here. Otherwise, subscribe, like, tell your friends about this stuff, and thank you for watching. Until next time, I'll see you guys on the next Build a Soil episode.